Hello there, beautiful souls and beautiful humans, and welcome, welcome to this energy update for the new moon in Scorpio, which is also an oracle reading. And it feels like there's some light language that wants to come through, particularly around this 144 and what that means in relation to where we are now, as we set the intention of I am choosing my highest timeline, probably in the most powerful portal we've had to date. And I know I keep saying that, but we are very nearly coming into the 1111 portal. And because we are actually in the year of 2023, the whole of the actual numerology of 11, 11, 2023 reduces again to 11. So it is huge. It's 11, 11, 11. And that's why I wanted to make this video ahead of the portal on the 11th, 11th. We're kind of in it already, but also ahead of the new moon on Monday, the 13th. So for those of you who are new to me, I am Rosanna Rosie Glohannis. I am a multidimensional success coach and the founder of the Star Peace Movement. And essentially, I'm a channel of grace. And what that means is the power of revelation. Now, I am here very much with the mission of making peace sexy, because I know deep down we have quite a fear of peace, actually, as a collective, as much as we say we want it. Um, there is a subconscious addiction to struggle, to conflict, to war, to stress, because that's what we've known for so many different generations. And actually, if we are going to choose peace in the collective, first, we need to choose it in our own hearts. And we are inspired by what peace might mean through the Star Peace Collective, which are essentially the most, I would say, advanced beings. And please don't take that hierarchically. Those who have most evolved into the frequency back into creator source energy that are in our universe. And it's a collection of galaxies that came together to say, hey, peace, it's time for peace on this particular plane in this universe. We're here going to co-create it. We're going to inspire the humans to actually want peace on planet Earth as well. So if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. If you're watching this in our Facebook group, hello hello welcome to manifesting star peace utopia for those of you who are new to the community it's so lovely to have had you joined i do invite you to relax let your mind relax and just enjoy receiving this information because really i did say that this particular energy is about our inner dictator and bringing our inner dictator to light so i'm going to go into what that actually means and since that download came about I actually had a whole load of information come up for me from various sources, which I just kept like cross-referencing over the last week um, and seeing how other information I've received over the last month to three months was also relating. And what this comes down to is actually a timeline split or a timeline convergence that leads to a timeline split. And it took me, it's still taking me some time to integrate this, to be honest. Um, so I'm going to share with you what feels relevant today. And much of it is actually about our sacred geometry. And it's about what we're tapped into. Now, we need duality to understand oneness, right? Just like, you know, we need oneness to understand duality. It's like a paradox of being conscious beings and uh, understanding a little bit more about creation. Now, it's important for every one of us to recognize that we're not ever going to understand all of it. So we get the information we need to receive on a need to know basis. And as you evolve in your own soul consciousness and you move beyond sort of egoic desires, and by that I mean satisfying the, the scared you, the you that is limited limited in mindset, limited in perception of what is possible. And actually, you've satisfied that part of you enough that you're then like, well, what else is there? What would happen if I put my soul in control? What would happen if I actually let go of all the different potentials and said, well, what's the very best? What could be the, the absolute like culmination of all the different potentials in the various timelines that I could actually uh, experience? I chose to experience my soul consciousness in its highest frequency. What would that timeline look like to fulfill my purpose here on this earth in the most graceful, easy and joyful way? And this is really, really important for us to start to consider because that is the invitation now. Thank you, beloved, which is to jump onto our highest timeline and to actually start to explore what that means. What does it mean for you? What does it mean for me? Well, I know like being letting go of worry and letting go of fear is a big part of being on our highest timeline. That does not mean you don't experience it. 
And this is the gift of the Scorpio energy that we're coming into because we're going into the underworld here in the Northern Hemisphere until we actually um, hit the solstice date uh, in December. We're really spiraling into the underworld, just like in the Southern Hemisphere, you're spiraling up to the sun, up to the light, right? And, you know, these are the, the two polarities. One isn't right and one isn't wrong. One isn't better than the other. They just give us different gifts. So we get to go into the depths of our subconscious and unconscious with Scorpio. And then with the energy that are reflected on the other side of the planet we get to kind of be right on the surface seeing everything from the perspective of oh what has really been brought to light here what has been difficult for me to see and it's there right in front of you right so that is the gift of Scorpio now we're going to do a little reading so by that I mean the oracle uh, healing cards now these are Leslie Sloan's cards they're absolutely amazing I love these they really are the only ones I use other than the starseed ones and I have so many <laughs> um, and I would just invite you if you do want a pack of these to go to my website rosyglow.com uh, if you're in the UK I can send them sell them to you directly from my website if you're not there is a link to Leslie's website so if you in Europe you can have them sent to you in Europe or you can also have them sent in the US anywhere else in the world as well so that's all there for you they're wonderful to play with and one of the most beautiful things about them is they have these mandalas on the one side and then the image, sorry, on the other side. And, you know, this is the beautiful thing because I'm seeing the, the flower of life on some of these, right? And it's like being able to understand how our sacred geometry is a portal, okay? What's important, though, to remember is at every stage of our growth, we can sort of choose to stay where we are. And for a long while now, I've been seeing the flower of life symbology in such a way that I've not really been attracted to it. It's something that drew me to the place that I am now, and this is why I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the hexagonal and the octagonal timelines, because it's a bit like, you know, we love to judge, right? We love to say this is the bad one. This is the good one. And I mean, the truth is one of them is where we actually, you know, are staying connected to our ego programming and we're feeding off others. We're feeding off finite fuel. Whereas the other one is actually relating to our infinite nature, the renewable resource, the constant ability to tap into the divine source, all that is, whatever language you want to use. And as a result of that, not needing to sort of leave a deficit. OK, there's a constant uh, recycling, if you like. There's a constant regenerating, which is it's the difference between the, the, the flower of life as we know it and the lotus of life, which is a toroidal flow. And I know for many of us, we have been stepping into this, okay? So if you have any questions as I'm going, please do um, share them. I'm gonna keep an eye on the, um, yeah, I'm gonna keep an eye on the, the comments that come along and I will answer afterwards. But let's just stick with the fact that there's quite a lot to share here. So what you might wanna do is make some notes. Now, this is the last time I'm gonna offer this out in the public arena as I have done for years and years. I've been receiving the information that's now important to call those of you who are ready to come into what I would call a star piece co-creators circle to offer you something that is in line with, you know, our yoga membership and a little bit more to actually gift you an opportunity to work more closely with the energies that are coming forward because we're scattered. There's so much in the collective, a bit of this, a bit of that, but that it's important to be able to tune in and follow something through. OK, in the same way as I talked about the hexagonal and the octagonal timelines and what they're really about. And actually, it brings Fibonacci in, you know, it brings all sorts of interesting concepts in that we kind of have thought this is the answer. And it's like, well, it's part of it, but there's something more. And I say this because, you know, many of us, as we start to awaken, realize what 3D consciousness is. Right. And we judge it as bad. And yet. You know, it's not bad. It's just a part of our evolution. And we then hear about 5D consciousness and what's beyond 5D consciousness. And we go, oh, I'm so excited. I want to be that. I want to be over there. Just take me over there. But you can't go over there without going through 4D. It's the bridge. And the bridge is the mind. And the mind is all about, well, are you going to let it control you? And therefore, you're going to keep feeding into your programming, which keeps you into lack consciousness, survival programming and the hexagonal timeline that basically teaches you it's you or someone else it's a dog eat dog or doggy dog world um or a survival of the fittest which has been disproven by the way 
Um, uh, or you actually step into this eternal nature of your soul consciousness that knows that we never die. Our consciousness is eternal. So, yes, this physical aspect of our being may perish and um, will de decompose. And eventually we might come back or go somewhere else and have a different experience. But for the most part, what we realize is our true nature is our eternal nature. And as a result of that, we don't fear the temporal. It's just change is constant. And that is how, when it comes to working with the mind, the choice for every one of us, if we want to live our highest path, is to descend from here, the brain ruling everything, deciding everything. This is where the dictator bit comes in to actually creating safety in the body, this physical vehicle that we have chosen to hold our soul light for as long as we're here on this planet and to create safety in the body, guess what you need? You need body-based practices. Guess what I teach? Body-based practices. That's what the yoga twice a week is all about. That's why I still teach it, even though, you know, in the realm of economics, it's really not the thing that pays my bills, right? But ultimately, it is what keeps me grounded. It allows more of my soul consciousness come into my physical body. And not all yoga is the same, folks. I mean, there's a lot. Yoga is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful um, journey to connect your body and your mind and your soul together. But it's very important to recognize that most of the yoga that I see in the world today is still keeping us trapped in the seven chakra system. And that is keeping us looping in along the three to 4D bridge. And it keeps us constantly seeking answers, knowledge, wisdom, philosophy through the mind. Guess what? We're still disassociated. We've swapped mainstream religion for something alternative, but we're still following those rules. Whatever it is, Ashtanga, Yanga, um, Vinyasa, whatever it is, right? And I've trained in many disciplines of yoga, by the way. So what it comes down to is... We need to create safety in the body. When we create safety in the body, we can calm the mind. Okay, when the body's relaxed, the mind gets calm. Guess what happens after that? You can then really tune into what's going on in your heart and guess who speaks to you through your heart? Your soul, okay? So that is the start of this exciting bit of news because ultimately the first entry level of my membership is going to be the cost of the yoga the monthly yoga so that is something to give everybody a chance to explore and there'll be different tiers because i'm going to show up for those who are showing up okay if you're showing up for yourself i'm here all right if you're willing to participate fully i'm here if you have truly chosen your highest timeline i'm here but I can't afford to be distracted anymore with everything else along the way. So this is your choice too. And I'm inviting you to say yes, because it's really important that we all get onto, on, onto this now. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Laura. I appreciate that. That's really beautiful. So Laura used to come to my physical classes. They're all online now, folks. And yes, I do run retreats where I offer physical yoga. And yes, I do one-off days. And yes, I will go where I'm called around the world if I like the idea of it to be able to offer this multidimensional yoga perspective because it's come from being a yoga teacher for 22 years now, maybe a little bit longer, having trained in many disciplines, but also being a Reiki master, being a channel of divine grace, being a multidimensional success coach and seeing just how important breath, sound movement practices are and physical practices are for us to be able to really hold the strength, the physical strength to hold more of our soul body, our soul and our light bodies, okay? So very important. Okay, let's move into this. So we're going to look a little bit more at what the energies are, then I will pull the cards, then we'll allow the transmission to come through, especially around the 144. Any questions? Um, I will look at the, the thread in the comments afterwards and I will make sure I answer everything that's there. So just remind me at the end if you have had a question and I haven't answered it, okay? And so what else? All right, this inner dictator element. Now, one of the things about Scorpio, and by the way, I'm not an astrologer. I use the new moons and the full moons to help me to write the chapters, to understand what's happening at this stage in terms of the energies. So new moons, intention setting, that will be our co-creator circle intention setting. Full moons, we do the clearing up work for that intention, what subconscious resistance came up. So that's how this has worked for all the years that I've been doing it, okay? So if you want to keep seeing where you've come from to where you're going to, these chapters really help for you to see. We've just come from an eclipse season last 18 months that was Scorpio, Lib uh, no, it wasn't, it was Scorpio, I wrote it down, sorry, Scorpio Taurus. And now we're moving into Aries Libra. Okay, so different energies. And we're already being told that this is about relationships and it's about igniting a new frequency in our relationships. So the interesting thing about Scorpio is there's two 
symbols in terms of the animals, the symbolism. So you've got the Scorpio, it's got the sting in the tail that will poison you. It's not a very nice bite. You know, it's not, it doesn't feel good and it kills you. Right? So that's one element. And then you've got the eagle, the eagle, the bird's eye view. Again, the eagle is a predator. So the eagle is uh, not something you want to be coming after you in the sky. Um, it knows how to swoop down with extreme precision and be able to target its prey. But also, what's very interesting about eagles is the journey they go through in terms of rebirth. OK, so they'll go through a phase where they get to the end, if you like, of their first life. And then they literally pull out all of their feathers one by one and they smash their beak on the ground. It's a painful process until a new one forms. And then they literally double their life. OK, their lifespan in their, in their physical bodies. Now, how is this relevant to us? It's like the phoenix regenerating. I know there's a lot of spiritual teachers, a lot of star seeds, a lot of light workers, a lot of luminaries in the world today who, like me, have been given the message that they have a new mission. And actually what they used to do isn't working anymore. And if you're finding at this point in your life that you're just not reaching your your previous client, previous client base, things are drying up in certain areas and you're like, well, what am I meant to be doing here? And you have a calling, you have a sense of the direction you need to go in, but your brain, your mind is arguing with you and saying, no, 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 you have to do this first. You have to exhaust every possibility here before you go here. And this is this issue of trusting our divine calling, because when we're called, we're called. I'm on the fourth iteration of my soul mission, if you like. And this one has required the most trust, especially when you're given guidance and you go, all right, follow it, wait for that result. And then it doesn't happen the way you expect. And you're like, oh. Where's this taking me? And it's taking you into deeper and deeper layers for yourself of your own presumptions, your own expectations, your own resistance, your own shadow. One of the things I'm going to be doing next week on Monday for the new moon is I'm going to be going through the essential mechanisms of aligning with your highest path, because this is what all my coaching work is about. It's even what my yoga is about. OK, and I've heard other teachers talk about the three brains in various contexts. There's nine brains, my friends, that we need to get online. So when we talk about the inner dictator, we talk about the energy of Scorpio. We have this invitation to recognize that we could say Scorpio is bad, Eagle's good. Or we could say, actually, they're both really important. They hold the deepest depths of understanding of what this particular zodiac sign is and the depths of us as human beings having, you know, a, a, sorry, spiritual beings having a physical experience. So when it comes to this, what I really feel is that we are learning to move beyond duality. When we come back to this hexagonal and octagonal timeline switch, and when you ask to align with your highest path, and by the way, I invite you to affirm it again and again and again and again, I am choosing my highest path. I am choosing my highest path. I'm choosing my highest path. I did that all day two days ago and had the most phenomenal lucid experience in the middle of the night, which I'll mention in a moment. But essentially what it comes down to when we choose it is we are basically saying I'm following the path of my soul. I am choosing to move beyond duality into oneness. And this is the frequency where we can co-create peace on Earth. Peace not being a boring flatline state but actually a dynamic dance with the energies of what is. But instead of choosing to divide and conquer, which is the way that we typically deal with conflict, we see, is there a doorway open for us to integrate, to assimilate, to percolate, to whatever your words are that allow you to play this dance of, oh, this is uncomfortable. I want to react like this. I want to choose this. I want to, but I'm not going to. What are you really saying to me? What are you really asking for? What is there a real calling for here going beyond the surface? So that's the invitation now for all of us with this energy is not to just take things at face value, dig deeper. And if you look at this in terms of world affairs, literally every great concept, say, you know, for example, uh, an awesome, I'm thinking about a chocolate uh, maker, for example, in England. I don't, I'm not going to mention names just for legal stuff, but like, you get a, an organic, for example, chocolate maker that's got all their ethics right, et cetera, and they're doing the right thing. Guess what happens? At some point, they get bought out by a huge chocolate maker that promises they're going to do all the same things. But of course, that doesn't happen. So the name's been bought. People still think they're buying the same product. They're still buying the same ethics, but they're not. So do we sell out or do we encourage those bigger 
um, if you like, players in the world to up their game. And as always, this is a situation where I think it's very important to remember that as anything gains popularity, it is you know, going to take a life of its own on. And I say this as someone at the start of, of something, you know, that is a movement and wishing to well bring a movement out into the collective. That's what I'm doing. It's like, OK, well, things can get distorted with time. Right. But if we're aware of this, we can then be mindful of it. We're aware of it. So this concept of inner dictator is a play on words. You've got your inner dictator. It's my way or the highway. Um, if you don't like the way it is, then you can just go away. And there is a place for that, actually, if you're holding a space and there are certain um, requirements for that space to be held and someone is coming into that space and not respecting it, then they do need to go. That You are the space holder. You are the provider of the safety. And if that is not being um, honoured, then there is a boundary that must not be crossed. Right. And that's why we do need strong boundaries. Fuck off fences and bullshit boundary ba barriers are very important and we need to respect their own boundaries or no one else will. But then dictation is another play on the word dictator right i am dictating what you are saying i'm writing down i'm scribing so the invitation again is who who is the dictator who is the part of you that is being listened to right who is the one calling the shots and who is the one that is following that and by that i mean so it's a little bit differently it's a lot here sorry just bear with me for a second so the part of us that is like, it has to be this way. There will be times when they're right and there'll be times when they're not right. There's another part of us which is dictating. That's just writing down, writing down, doing whatever you're told, never questioning it. And that's what I'm talking about, this play between the part of us that's the dictator stating how things have to be and the one that's taking down the notes going, are you sure about that? Is that really what you mean? Is that really relevant here? We need that dialogue and that questioning. And it's very interesting that in the world we're in today, we're not encouraged to think critically. We're encouraged to take ideas on, go with them, energize them, but not to question them. In fact, even on certain platforms, I will not say too much, um, things disappearing because it doesn't go with the narrative that, that, that these platforms actually want us to promote. So, you know, what happens? Well, people like me are like water through the cracks. We find our ways, right? And so this is the same for you is to allow in you an awareness that there's always going to be different voices. But what you want is your highest self-consciousness to be able to come through no matter what. How are you going to guarantee that? Simple. Call it in. I had one of my coaches literally the other day she's watching a video and said, she's like, it's talking about this highest self-consciousness. It's talking about this highest highest path choice. How do I choose it? And I was just like, girlfriend, have you seen all the videos I've just put out? How do we choose the highest path? Please put it in the comments. How do we choose it? I'll, I'll make this easy for you. State it. I am choosing my highest path. It's really simple. Okay. You state it. You claim it. You command it. You ordain it. You don't go, ooh, is it a good idea for me to choose my highest path? <laughs> ah, come on. No more that stuff, okay? Right, let's whiz on. So we have a full moon in Gemini coming, okay? We are currently living out some very interesting dynamics around the masculine and the feminine because we have just had the full moon in Taurus, which was playing at all of where do we feel secure and insecure, financial stuff, material stuff, relational stuff, feeling comfortable, luxurious, taking care of, etc. Before that was new moon in Libra both had eclipses right so the new moon in libra was actually setting the scene for what's coming now as we're going to be moving out of the scorpio energy so um we have aries i think i've said that right and libra axis that's coming right so why this is important is i noticed very quickly as we moved through from the new moon libra energy to taurus that these toxic patterns were coming up and they were reflecting our own inner masculine and inner feminine toxicity now, i've made other videos about this i'm not going to go on about it too much but like do we truly have and if you do know someone that you would like to energize as a true example put it in the comments for me do we really have an example of an exalted let's call it resolved if you don't like the word divine but divine masculine divine feminine exalted resolve feminine exalted resolve masculine if we were to consider source all that is god whatever you want to call all that is as a masculine and a feminine counterpart 
as humans, who would we say reflects that for us, right? Because I don't think we really have any great examples. And, you know, we have women's lib, we have the rising of the feminine. I was talking again about this in my coaches meeting the other day. And it's like, let's just think about this for a second, okay? I know that there are plenty of humans on this earth that remember past lives, okay? For me, it comes in and out, it's not my forte. But I know, I know intuitively that the matriarchal times were not balanced any more than the patriarchal times were balanced. And I was talking to another dear friend of mine, the lovely uh, Tara Love Perry, who's awesome. And we've got some exciting stuff coming up we're going to share with you. And basically, she does remember. <laughs> and she was saying, yeah, we weren't very nice to the men. We basically thought they were subservient. Um, we didn't think they were very clever. We were the seers, the oracles. So we just used them. You know, we use them, we manipulate them, we suppress them. Well, guess what happened? The pendulum swung. And if you actually want a sense of that, watch the Barbie movie. It's all laid out beautifully. OK, so, you know, we have to move beyond duality to have peace. Now, what does moving beyond duality mean? It means accepting polarity is essential to hold the fabric of our universe together. We're not judging night as bad and, and day as good. We're just saying night is dark and day is light. That's just how it works, right? Okay. So in the same way, when we look at our own inner masculine, and our own inner feminine, we're going to have passive and active elements to both the masculine and the feminine. Neither are wrong and neither are right. But what we do want to know is the parts of us that are in shadow, which means they're not claimed. We haven't owned them. We haven't loved them. We've made them feel unworthy, unacceptable. You know, the thoughts you don't like to have, jealousy, envy, uh, fear, whatever the ones are that you feel towards others, like not good enough, the rest of it. So you attack yourself or you attack others. So these the shadow is the unclaimed part of us. And this part of us seeks to control things because it doesn't feel safe. It's in the dark, it hasn't been seen, hasn't been witnessed, hasn't been approved of, accepted, acknowledged. So which parts of you do you not accept, approve of, or acknowledge, et cetera, et cetera, because that's the deep work. And as you do this, and as you allow yourself to do this, you'll see that, oh, okay, because I don't like to feel this, I have this way of controlling things so I don't have to feel it. I sense when we're going this way. So I do something else instead. And these are the subtle control tactics, okay, that are inside of us and the unclaimed parts of our masculine and feminine that we want to become aware of. My beautiful husband made me aware of something the other day, which I really hadn't noticed I had done. And actually it upset him. And I was trying to protect a part of me, right? That didn't like to feel a certain way, but I hadn't brought it to light. So again, the beauty of our physical human relationships is our capacity to be able to, to just see things we couldn't see before because we're safe in, in a re healthy relationship and we can bring it to light. I've heard this from a lot of other feminines recently who I would say are conscious friends. They've noticed that the finger pointing they tend to do around their masculines, so pointing towards the masculine's wrongdoing, are actually elements of their own inner masculine and feminine too. So you know, if you don't like what you're seeing on the outside, do take a moment to look inside. It is important. <laughs> and, um, you know, the shadow work is a huge part of my coaching work. When when I take people into the Fearless, Loved Up and Limitless container or Liberation from Limitation that Lula is teaching or my one to one work, I literally have to say, look, I'm going to piss you off. I'm going to say things to you that you're going to want to run away from. I'm not going to say in an unkind way. There are going to be times when you want me to fuck off. All right. And I, it's one of the, the rainbow gems that are the in-house ones is, you know, <laughs> fuck off rosy moment. Right. And that's good. You want to know that because that's when you're seeing something you couldn't see before. And your old self is going to squirm and try and make it about something else and, you know, spit the dummy. But it's not about that at all. So wrestling with egos, I'm, I'm so not up for that anymore. Not, not in a big way. Right. That's why I do a lot of pre-screening my clients beforehand to see are they really ready for this medicine? Because it's not for everyone. You know, not everyone is going to choose the 5D and beyond path. It's uncomfortable if you're not willing to test yourself, okay, to challenge yourself. But for those of you who do like to challenge yourselves, this is the ultimate challenge, is to meet your soul self. So when we come again to this timeline split and we come into this energy of the, the control tactics, in the old world, the, the fear matrix OK, we're just going to keep projecting what we don't accept in ourselves. and We're going to keep trying to steal our energy from each other in the new world. What we're doing is we're saying everything can coexist. 
I'm choosing the divine matrix over the fear matrix. I'm choosing to remember my divinity in this and to seek resolution. Okay, that's the key. All right. And through that, what then happens is we realize that change doesn't happen on our terms. You can't say, I want to connect to my soul, but it has to only cost this and it take only this long. And I, I have to be working with this color and that. It doesn't work like that. OK, this is why the surrender to the highest path is step six in my process. That is self mastery. And we're all being called to do this right now. So ahead of 11, 11, choose daily. I'm choosing my highest path, not just daily, every hour of every day choose it i'm choosing it morning and night what does my highest path look like i'm willing to surrender everything that doesn't belong to my highest path and you know the beautiful thing about our higher self nature is they'll just go eat as much cake as you want cake isn't good for you but eat as much cake as you want until you get sick of that cake and you don't want it anymore and i do believe that's how i've let things go is where no one's put an external boundary on for me but i've had to get like have my fill of something that i thought i didn't want someone else or something else to take away before i go what am i doing this is not really what I want for myself. And then there's something inside of you, that inner authority that comes forward that goes, no, not doing that anymore. Done. You usually have to get to quite a low point before that, but that's part of the journey. So embrace it. Got some good, I've got, I've really got to see what people are saying here. All right, finishing this off and then we'll get into the clearing. So um, the toxic masculine and feminine control patterns are coming up. They have to come up. When we get to the full moon in Gemini, we are again collapsing the hexagonal timeline. That's what we're going to be doing. That's going to be my last public offering for everyone before the new membership kicks in. So that'll be in two weeks time after the 13th. OK, and, you know, this is the main thing that I really want to encourage you to do is to remember any sign, any zodiac sign that has like two, like Libra, Gemini, Pisces. I think they're the main three. There might be others. But basically, they're always telling us about this inner masculine, inner feminine, voice of head, voice of heart, what we're going to follow. And, you know, never have I said, shut your your mind up and put it in the cupboard and don't listen to it ever. That's not the point. Just remember, physiologically, there are more receptor cells, sensory cells sending information from the heart to the brain than the brain to the heart. The brain is not the mind. The mind is in the field. But the brain is the computer, OK, that then taps into the mind unless we take that journey into the heart getting the brain to resonate with the heart rather than the heart resonating with the brain and then guess what happens the mind is influenced by your heart by your soul you tap into divine mind it's not a bad thing. to tap into divine mind then it's not a bad thing but you have to learn to quieten thoughts down because thinking Thinking takes you into brain programs, okay? Thinking isn't how your best answers come. You actually learn to be in no mind for your best answers to come. And that, again, is that ego pull because the ego says, I've got to think hard on this. Let me think and find a solution. Mm -hmm. Oh, I found one. But, you know, if you were actually to look at the wider perspective, that probably wasn't the best. If you had actually allowed yourself just to quieten the mind, get on with something mundane, and boom, this drops in, and that's your higher mind talking through your soul, through your heart. OK, so divine mind versus ego mind. They both coexist. They're going to continue to coexist. Which one are you going to listen to? The ego mind will always get, <clears throat> I have something to say, in which case you go, oh, what is it you want to say? Tell me. OK, I've heard you. Thank you for sharing. Now, tapping into that divine mind. Doesn't that sound exciting? I would like to think you are enjoying it. So please do let me know. All right. So beyond this ah 144 so the interesting thing about this timeline convergence and in fact the fibonacci let me just see if i wrote this down connected so um it was fibonacci and crystal spiral so the crystal spiral k r i s t a l crystalline grid christ consciousness you get there's all this that's bringing us back to the divine it's all been seeded for a long time where they converge is at number 144. Now, whatever that means, because I, you know, what I mean by where they converge, the the point at which they converge in, in terms of numbers is number 144. And this is where we are now. Today, 8th through to the 11th, 13th, maybe even through to the Gemini full moon, I, I feel, is this choice that we're all making. It's all the way to the end of this month. 
Okay, so take the 11th of the 11th. I, I don't think I'm going to do anything on that day. It feels like I just also want to receive my upgrades as well. But this is the information. You've got it all here. This is it. I'm choosing my highest timeline. Thy will be done. I'm putting my soul in control. I am surrendering control to my soul. I am choosing my highest timeline. Thy will be done. I'm putting my soul in control. I am surrendering control to my soul. Just use that as your mantra. Okay. Use that as your mantra for that day and then allow yourself to show up on Monday so we can talk about the, the mechanisms of living this highest path. Then you'll know what you have done and what you haven't done yet. And you can start to create the process for yourself because when you know what you're dealing with, then you can start to deal with it. OK, so. I think that's it in that bit before I go into the reading. Ah, no, that was it about the 144. Sorry. So 144, from my perspective, is the Codex for Peace. Now, I'll give you an example of how we can get lost in this. OK, so I know that there is a strong connection with the number 144 in the Bible um, in terms of the chosen ones, those who are going to come along, those of us who see ourselves as the peacekeepers, the peacemakers, those of us who are here to bring this thousand years of peace to the earth second coming of christ from my perspective is through all of us choosing the christed path right that's how it happens um but there's also a very strong connection with twin flames now this is where i would say the higher and the lower octave just like with scorpio right just like with anything we choose in life we can come from the lower part of us or the higher part but the way that we really come from our higher part is to integrate the lower part of us the shadow into the light you don't separate them you integrate them, which is why I believe for so many of us, the only way out is through. You have to go through the hexagonal or have had to up until this point, the hexagonal timeline to get to the octagonal. All right. It's a choice point in us. Are we going to continue to seek to manifest, use law of attraction for our own, like, you know, lack consciousness um, intentions, for want of a better word? Or are we going to just go, I trust I'm always provided for everything I need, what I'll receive. How do I want to play in this world? And be much less attached to this amount of money means I'm a worthwhile person doing this, having this many clients or having this amount of um, this, this amount of property, whatever you measure success by. Right. Success is fulfillment, basically. And having your needs met on physical levels. So with the 144 and the twin flames, what I see so many people doing is like getting obsessed about meeting their twin, that they can't possibly progress until they meet their twin. And what I'd say to that is you will meet your twin through integrating your inner masculine and feminine. If you're looking to do this on the outside, you are so distracting yourself because they come when you're doing this work, right? Obviously, you have to recognize those who are um, responding to the call but are not the resonance. That's discernment, which you learn through clearing your subconscious, right? I'm seeing quite a lot. And I, you know, I always are when I say this in public, I think, OK, is this me as well? Because you want to always make sure that you are anything you're talking about. You're also self-reflecting. But I know I have been this person and that there's a lot of outer work and not a lot of inner work. So if we're showing up as spiritual teachers and channels and our inner self is not resolved to a level where um, we're willing at least to trust others not everyone not the public but with our shadow and light and to be willing to be seen our vulnerability be seen where we feel like we haven't got our shit together to be seen etc etc that's so important it's important in relationship it's important in friendship it's important in everything we do if we are way showers the inner work is the key okay so if you're on this path of seeking your twin flame and really that's your whole focus the whole time seek sacred union within and then see what happens, because this is where I see the 144 sending us either up the spiral of joy or down the spiral of doom. And you'll know this by how much you're staying in duality in good, bad, black, white, um, evil, divine, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because it's all us. Everything is part of us. This simulated reality. Everything is part of us. Now. As we're choosing highest timelines, a lot of fears are coming to the table. They're coming to the surface. OK, so I had someone contact me today as a dear soul that I recognize. And they woke up in the middle of the night with real anxiety. Now, two nights ago, 
I was going to sleep and I was choosing my highest timeline and I was listening to one of my co-creation meditations, which was about our inner magic man. And I've been in a big discussion with my uh, inner circle membership about what your inner magic man is, because it's a concept that I introduce and most people have admitted they don't get what it is. So we had to do a whole session on it and, and see what that really means. And I'm, some of what I said today relates to that. But I discovered that, well, basically, I, I went to bed with this highest timeline intention and then I woke up with this vision of basically a plasmic body of mine, my, which I called the the uh, vampire body, which really is the part of me, which is the hexagonal timeline body, right? Had been basically annihilated. It's like a vampire being stabbed in the heart. If you've ever seen True Blood, you know what I mean. They, they become this plasmic goo, right? And it was like, that's what happened to me. I became, pla that part of me became pl plasmic goo and my pillar of source light became super active. Um, and I did the meditation this morning and saw that my inner magic man is a portal, right? A golden portal with magenta and all sorts of other things going on. But I had to free myself from the shackles of that hexagonal timeline. And, you know, by choosing the highest path, that's what you're doing. So, you know, if you're finding stuff happening in the middle of the night, then trust, okay, is all I'm going to say. Just trust because... What that actually means is you are starting to make those choices and changes in your unconscious. So delta brainwaves, unconscious, theta, subconscious, yeah, alpha, allowing yourself to get into a state where you can really access all of your consciousness. So just allow yourself now to know that for the most part, the you that you think you are is who you've been programmed to be. And we're now learning to choose our reality consciously as our highest self. So let's just see here for this new moon in Scorpio, for this 1111 portal, for this preparation for our highest timeline. What is this all looking like now? What does this actually mean? What do we need to know? What is it about? So for the collective tuning in, ooh, heart of the matter is all about surfing the cosmic ocean. Okay, this is really about learning to enjoy being in the unknown okay so this is like a midnight surf operation you got the lunation there of a rainbow moon illuminating the pathway through the dark so your subconscious your unconscious giving you all the clues you need about where to go and where to avoid the rainbow energy is very interesting because that's the flame that came through me that i initiate people into and that is transmuting toxins okay it's also about reclaiming all 12 strands of our dna which you know some people just won't really get and that's okay but that is what we're doing is learn to be the cosmic surfer to enjoy surfing new terrain exploring new terrain not fearing what's at the bottom of the ocean what you can't see in the dark but trusting everything that you need to see is illuminated and you are therefore safe now the block to this So remember I said to you, for me, my um, inner magic man was blazing. That's the sword of fire. This is Archangel Michael, as I understand Archangel Michael. You could say it's also St. George. Um, and you have this beautiful um, disc of light. So this being has is, is got a shield of light and a sword of fire, of, of sacred holy fire. So what is the block to this? Trusting in our divinity. Okay, allowing our true choice to be the true path the highest path which is the octagonal uh, timeline and following it so when we feel fear when we experience fear we know that fear is false evidence or emotion or expectation appearing real because unless there really is a dragon or a bomb over our heads um, or a snake about to bite us we are actually imagining things either from the past well from the past that might be present in the future so it's very important that we um, allow ourselves to trust in the courage that we have actually confidence in our courage is what I would say there and to call in the aspects of us that can work with fear that can work with it and transmute it into passion for change okay that's what we're here to do now the here and now what was I saying before about the Scorpio and the eagle it's the phoenix rising out of the ashes. Okay, so this beautiful being, and this this is what I mean, is I feel like this symbology here, although you've, you've got this, this flower of life in there somewhere, you've got this transformation 
all right you're transforming the energies you're moving from one dimension into another with this so here we're allowing the old self to die we're allowing ourselves to rise from hexagonal to octagonal okay we make that choice that we want to align with our highest path that is the gift of 11 11 11 Ooh, let's see if that one does come up so the resolve and the infinite possibilities what does come out here for us I'll bring in a little bit of light language, see where we go. Um, I'm going to say feel the fear and do it anyway is, is going to be a really important lesson here. Oh, what an interesting card. So to end this, the resolve and the infinite possibilities, this is the card of deprogramming. <laughs> this is the card where... Everyone's like here in the conveyor belt, you know, working in a factory, just being a number, doing what you're told. And then someone has this boom, light bulb moment, epiphany, grace channeled. Uh, and they go, what am I doing here? Why am I doing this? There must be more to life than this. That's you coming out of the fear matrix hexagonal program into your octagonal timeline, into your divinity, into the lotus of life, into your eternal nature, running the show here on this temporal planet. Okay. I think that's very cool. At the top of the deck, you have St. Francis of Assisi. Make me an instrument of your peace. At the bottom of the deck, oh, how fabulous. Everyone's a piece of the puzzle. Now, please forgive me for this, but everyone's a P-E-A-C-E -E of the puzzle. Oh. <laughs> and this is the puzzle of Paradise Earth. All right, just before the little light language, let's just see. What have we got here? We've got some afternoon hello jen Gemma, and anna laura very good to see you all let's see what people are saying did you uh did you use yes i did used to do these at the start of my yoga every class and i still do online um when i do my online classes we always start with a little blessing and a little reading just so you know so we know what we're working with with these energies um uh, Laura's saying your yoga is amazing. It helped me my healing, my chronic health conditions. Oh, I'm so pleased to hear that. Hello, RC Simpson. Uh, I'm choosing my highest path. Put your soul in control. I know the energy, though, just not in physical form. OK, so um, Gemma's saying her feminine idea of, of like a divine femme is Tracy Holloway. I don't even know who she is. I'm going to have a look. For me, the masculine that I love to connect this to is actually Bruce Lipton. Or my husband, he's cool. But Bruce Lipton, like, just he just holds the energy of divine mind as far as I'm concerned. Divine heart femme, divine man, um, mind masculine. And where are we? Shadow work is key to inner and external peace. I like that, honestly. What do you like that, honestly? Um, <clears throat> Gemma's saying, those fuck-off moments have brought the, my biggest breakthroughs. Yeah, piece of the puzzle. Good. So no questions. Let's go into the light language. And please do remember, anyone who's catching this as a replay um this will be um if you have any questions that come up just put them in the comments and i will respond one of my team members will let me know okay so let's actually see what we've got here i have a piece of golden calcite which has come from actually it's honey calcite from um this has come from the retreat that we just ran the star piece retreat and this is called unicorn stone which is a mixture of smoky quartz lepidolite and i think it is it's pink tourmaline so let's just see what's coming in if you want to just relax your shoulders <sighs> blow a few raspberries it's going to call our higher self in so please draw a circle in the air in front with your nose go the other way as well breathe the nose up and down gorgeous and then inhale and just send your breath down your body down into your earth chakra spin your earth chakra activate your earth chakra and then take your awareness right down to the core of mother earth hello mother earth hello beautiful beautiful energy from the sun that created this planet thank you thank you the star within breathing this all the way up breathing out through the crown of the head all the way up through our soul chakra sun oh galactic universal multiversal sun omniversal sun. beautiful connecting to all that is source unconditional love blessings 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 calling in now the star peace collective i'm just calling our i am presence in i am all that is 
I am the one self I am. I am that I am. I am the source of my creations. I am the creator of my reality. I am the creation. I am a multidimensional being of love and light. I am choosing my highest timeline. I am surrendering. Now I'm putting my soul in control. I am surrendering control to my soul. I am aligned with the divine. I am that I am. I am that I am. I am that I am. Calling in now the Star Peace Collective. Calling in now some guidance regarding 144 in relation to this hexagonal and octagonal timeline switch. And also any messages regarding 11, 11, 11. Thank you, thank you, thank you. May I be a pure channel of grace. Thank you, pure channel of source energy. Opening up now. Thank you. <laughs> Beloved ones, we do laugh. We do laugh at how you love to understand everything and seek to make sense of everything. And yet we ask you to let go and trust, to let go. Trust us. Yes, we know it's hard to trust, especially when you've been let down, when it doesn't look like things materialize as you wish, and when you are taking risks beyond anything you've ever known before. And we are with you always. We are always, always holding you, supporting you, and asking you please to hand back to us that which feels too much that which you do not understand or know how to work with. We are here to help you to move through the density into the light. And 144 is key. 144 is the number of mastery. 144 relates to the frequency of nine, which is completion. It takes us from the eternal, the number eight, the infinity symbol, into nine, where we have moved beyond the eternal into the capacity to create again from a new perspective. So yes, we are all co-creating a new universe together. We are creating the universe of unity, one. Eight plus one is nine. Completion nine sets us back up now to create again a new frequency, beginning with the awareness now of oneness as our choice. We have experienced duality, gone through all of the frequencies from zero to nine. We are ready now to move into the unity consciousness of a new universe to tap into zero point to allow all that we have learned on this journey of separation, how separation creates an awareness of what unity is. And within the unity of a circle, a sphere, all other geometric shapes exist. Whether these shapes are <laughs> of the hexagonal or the octagonal timeline, it doesn't matter. Did you hear us? It doesn't matter. The point is this, dear ones. You don't know unless you know, do you? But once you know, you know. And then when you do know, you can make another choice, can't you? Now notice the right side of your chin, your shoulder, your neck. Notice what is going on here. Is there a part of you that is in resistance? Can you bring light and love to that part of you and accept that resistance right now and not make it bad? Ooh. just be with this for a moment wherever you have experienced tension in your body as this light language has been coming through accept 
bring your light your love to this part of you and know that everything is existing for your own divine enjoyment yes i know this might sound hard for you to accept the pain the struggle the stress the longing, the separation, the conflict. Why does that exist for you? So you may choose something else. What do you want instead? Are you ready to stop? Are you ready to start something new? The moment you say yes, things change. And then the opportunities start to shift in your life. But you must make conscious choices, beloved ones, to step away from what you have outgrown and step towards what you want, what you desire, what you long for. So the key to this is go where you feel excitement, go where you feel joy, go where you can notice you have a sense of fear, but you actually have a sense of longing to move beyond that fear. Knowing that that fear would previously stop you in the past, but actually the version of you that you are longing to become is the version of you that embraced that fear, felt it and moved through it to the other side. Where they chose to embody the version of themselves they've never been before in this physical reality. Churaya, yawanaya, kuraya. One, four, four. When you call this number in, it allows you to reconnect to the divine tapestry, the divine matrix. It allows you to communicate with your beloved sacred union ascension partner, with your sacred twin flame, whether they are in physical or not. We do not tell you to believe the world is flat or round. We ask you to accept it as both. Can you please now bridge duality, bridge the opposites with your being, with your consciousness and accept it is all here and what you focus on grows. Every one of us here now on this planet is being invited to receive divine guidance, to be the voice of peace, to seek what is beyond conflict and challenge in the personal life and the collective. This is our message to you today. We are with you. We are you. We are part of you. We are all that is. And we have chosen to celebrate the light has one in our universe. It has one on this planet because it has one in you, beloved one. So on this note, we say, as you move towards 11, 11, 2023, enjoy, have fun. Lift your frequency. Welcome what is coming. Open your eyes. Enjoy. Receive. So it is and so it shall be. We thank you for participating in this co-creation. We thank you for choosing your highest path. Until we meet again, we are complete. That was a bit fruity and spicy, wasn't it? Coming back now, if anyone has anything that they would like to contribute to the commentary, all I'm going to say is two things I've mentioned to you are happening. One, we're starting a Starpiece co-creators circle spiral membership. Okay, and the starting price of this, there'll be an option for the um the yoga because I'm I'm basically making the yoga online yoga a part of all levels of this membership okay because I'd like to invite you to come in even if you can only watch and do certain things from the chair that's fine but I'd like you to participate breath sound movement practices are essential we can't do energy work without physical just can't do it it's not good for us okay you know you don't do a reiki attunement from no attunement to master you have to go through stages of initiation it's the same. Our bodies cannot just handle loads of our soul light in. They just can't handle it. It can send you loopy. OK, so we need to anchor down. Now, I really felt a lot going on here, which is quite interesting, whether that was something that was from within me or something I was feeling in the collective. I invite you to let me know anyone who's got stuff going on the right side. Ah, oh, that's good to know. That's really good to know. OK, so. The light language, obviously, that I share comes through from a variety of constellations. A beautiful, wonderful soul. <laughs> Janie, I didn't know I was going to do this, but this is um, a, a soul image, if you like. I'll put Janie's details if anyone would like to connect with her. But this, she she channeled for me the various um, star constellations, the fat star families that I know 
I communicate with and I've learned about many more as well through a variety a galactic astrologer and again if you want those details let me know but essentially you know we can get these snippets of information it's what we actually do with them so first of all there's a membership coming just to be able to support people to progress through what we're doing in each of these new moon and full moon um experiences that's why i'm doing them again for the public so you can get a sense of what happens i invite you to journal between sessions so you know what is coming up for you and to work with what i say couldn't remember there was one of the i am statements i couldn't remember as i was doing that little uh, light language bringing in but i said it a bit earlier on so write those four down and work with them for the 11 11 11 portal and um the, the second thing is on Monday, the 13th, the new moon energy, I'm going to be sharing a free masterclass. Again, this is the last one I'm doing like this because these will all be part of the membership, depending on the level that you actually go for, uh, which will all be about the mechanisms of living your highest path. So you can really see, you know, what you have done and what you haven't done. And it's as, as important that conscious millionaires and billionaires show up for this as it is for someone who feels they don't have a pot to piss in. Because actually, when you get a sense of what work you have done and what you haven't and where you're going around in circles and what your idea of um, your highest path is, it will really help you to then see what your natural next step is. OK, so both of those really, really important. Um, there'll be more information coming. So if you haven't yet joined my mailing list at rosyglow.com, R-O-Z-Y-G-L-O-W, please do. You'll get the rainbow gems as a gift from me. And then you'll also receive the various emails. We'll probably be doing more through the Star Peace website as the book is nearly written. It's nearly finished. I'm taking the rest of this month to finish it. Um, and that is why I'm saying to those of you who would like to do some deep work with me, now's the time to book your desire mapping calls because I'll be kicking back up probably in probably in January, maybe before, uh, but I'm feeling the energies right now of just finishing the book. However, I know that it can be a really big investment to actually just pay it all in one go. So for those of you who would like to start to split the payments, start to get going, now's the time. Okay, so this is four figure plus investment for the one-to-one, -one, uh, sorry, for the group coaching, five figure plus for uh, one to one coaching. And that's why I wanted to make, you know, something that was a two and three figure membership available to those of you who wanted that step up the ladder. The important thing is just do something. We can't be on the fence anymore. OK, there's no more. I'm sort of on my highest timeline, but not really choose. That's why I'm doing this now this is why I'm basically putting a wall around what I do and saying, are you in or not? because I need you to come forward now fully to receive these codes. Otherwise they're just getting scattered in the ethers and they're not really doing anything. And they're not necessarily also ending up in the right hands. So this is what's happened now to help us progress star peace as a consciousness, as a collective consciousness that we are co-creating together. And you will have the opportunity either just to receive, which is what the lower cost membership will be, uh, or to participate and co-create, which is what the different levels will be about. So it's all formulating. I'll have more on that on Monday and then more on that again by the time we have the next full moon. Um, and for those who are in my membership, like I've got some people here who have been through the deep dive, um, the deep reprogramming and are in my inner circle membership. They know the key is to keep showing up and plugging in. They know that this isn't a once a week thing. This is an every day and several times a day. It might be every hour of every day that we need to remind ourselves, which is where setting an alarm can be so useful, right? But it is literally embodying the version of you that you have connected with, that you've decided you want to be. That doesn't just come because you ask for it every once in a while. This is a full on commitment and it's really exciting, but you have to get so fed up with the old version of you to fully embrace it, right? So what have I got here? Um... Jen was saying, I had to move my pillows, getting pain on my right side. Very beautiful. Surrendering, releasing and trusting. You're welcome. Free masterclass, choosing highest path, November the 13th. I think it'll be at 7 p.m. UK time, GMT, but I'll announce that later. I'm choosing my highest path timeline. I'm putting my soul in control. I'm surrendering control to my soul. Yeah, there was one more before that because I, I mentioned it a bit earlier, but I'll listen to it and we'll bring it in. Don't worry. For now, it feels like we are complete. Have I got any anything outstanding from anybody that you would like to share um let me know if not i am going to say goodbye and so for those of you who are on youtube actually everyone right the exciting thing for me at the moment is it's time to start again releasing some of the podcasts that i filmed a bit earlier this year and oh my goodness i've been listening back to them I'm like this is so amazing and we found one today i thought we'd lost and i was so gutted because it was probably one of my favorite creations so you know they'll, they'll be coming up on youtube and i probably will start a rumble account because um 
or basically there's things we can say and things we can't say in certain avenues and in fact yeah it's not even about rumble it's about being able to be part of a private membership that will allow you to speak truth in a way that we can actually really be aware of who's with us and who we're speaking with okay as well so that's part of it you're very very welcome so um, I also want to say to anyone who feels that my offerings are not available to them, particularly with this new membership I'm proposing, you just get in touch with me and you let me know what you can put down monthly and I'll talk to you about that. OK, because I'm not going to push people away, but I don't want to hear, you know, this has to now become an exchange. That's what I've been told. OK, is to show up for those who are willing to step forward and, and make a regular contribution to themselves through the work that we're doing. This is what it comes down to. OK. I love you all. You are absolutely amazing. I think I'm going to post my very good friend, uh, friends, Megan and Olivier are doing a concert on the 11th of the 11th. It'll be an online one. They, they're beautiful sound bath practitioners that um, Megan's got lovely um, light language transmissions as well. So I will put the link to that because um, if you do want to do something that's going to speak to beyond the logic, that's going to be a beautiful thing to do on that day. Okay. And I'll see you on Monday. And then again, I'll put the link to the, the desire mapping calls for those of you who are like, I want to do something. Let's get doing. Lots of love for now. Take care.